Hey, what's up? It's the Figure Hunter, and up for full and comprehensive review today is the new Polar Grit X Pro. And I am actually pretty fired up about this one. We're going to test it and going to talk about it in a bunch of different layers and different ways. As always, the Figure Hunter channel and website associated with it is for the purpose of testing and tracking devising devices for CrossFit training versus all the running, swimming, and uh, biking videos that are out there. So if you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing for more. I have gotten the Whoop uh, 4.0 device as well as I'm finishing up the Amazfit GTR3 and I have a number of other reviews that are set to come out. So lots of good content on the way that you don't want to miss. Now, up for review today with the Vic, with the Polar Grit X Pro, we're going to talk about it in a few different layers. So we're going to talk about a general overview, we're going to look at the watch, we're going to look at the app, and then we're going to talk about the pros and cons. With each of these sort of segments and pieces, we're going to talk about a detailed pros and cons list. And at the end, in summary, I'm not going to go back through all the pros and cons, so you got to kind of watch each section. I'm actually going to talk about the real deal issues, like in the real day-to-day -day training, what is of use and what is of failure. I also have done different accuracy tests on this as a separate piece. So the heart rate accuracy test, I'll put in a link below. It's the same heart rate as the Polar Vantage V2. I also compared it to the Garmin Phoenix 6. I'll put that below. And the Polar Vantage V2, just as a general summary review, that in the uh, description below, along with timestamps, because these can be a little bit long. So back to the order of things. General overview, watch app, pros and cons. Workout usage, watch app, pros and cons. Training load, training evaluation, watch, app, uh, pros and cons, and then sleep and wellness, watch, app, and pros and cons. So with that, let's dive into the watch, talk about the general overview, the specs, and then look at the app, and then talk about it. All right, so here it is. You have the Grid X Pro. It is 47 millimeters, and it's actually 15 and a half millimeters thick. I don't know what the website says. It's actually a little bit bigger than 47 millimeters, 15 and a half meter thick, and it is 77 grams, which actually compares. It's lighter than the Phoenix 6, um, so and it's heavier than the Polar Vantage V2. If you want to watch those videos, you can see those facts. Um, the bezel is full stainless steel, and it's got an edge to it, which is fantastic, and the super big upgrade is got sapphire glass. So the glass is gonna be bulletproof, which is just awesome. You know, three buttons and two on this side, they have like a little texture to them, which is great. I love the red accents. I love the overall design. And the band is, is rubber and it's 22 millimeters, but the band is both thick and it feels good as well as stretchable. And it's got this sort of uh, design to the outside, which it, yeah, I just, I, I love the band. The heart rate is actually the Precision Prime 2.0, I think, that came out with the original grit and is also on the Vantage V2. So um, it uses just a different color light diode. So it's got orange and red versus green and red. There he goes for a second if you can see it on the video. Um, but that's the specs for what is on the watch itself. When you look at the watch, you can see that it's a 1.2 inch inlay, you know, so screen. So you see you got a lot of bezel here, which is a bummer that it didn't increase it to a bigger screen. And the other thing, one thing that they did increase, you saw in my little video short, is they made it to where you can set the backlight on a wrist raise to high, so you get a much better backlight. But the drag is, is that if you push the button, you get even more backlight, and you can't set the setting to go max. So if you if you were to, you know, so turn it off, if you were to look at, okay, go off. If you were to look at the um, on a light meter, so it's like 15.5 on the brightness when you do a wrist raise and you push the button, it's 25.5. So there's a bunch they're cutting out and not giving you the ability to do a simple wrist raise because I just won't touch the button. That's just way too much work. If I'm just sort of flipping my wrist to look at the time, I want to see it. Um, they've added some new widgets, pieces of information. This is your time spent in your heart rate zones. In any of these sort of exterior pieces of information, there's just going to be the same watch screen and then some basics around the rim as well as basic right here so that's how they do their layout of information and then you toggle through up or down or by swiping you toggle through the different screens of information and it's got a touch screen touch screen is a little problematic doesn't work super well um, you have the weather widget you got your overall training widget where it'll give you a recommendation based on your night's sleep or if you've trained that day so now it's telling me to stretch because I worked out today if you have a good night's sleep it'll tell you to go hard um, your nightly recharge, we're gonna talk about all those things in specifics, your training logbook, your overall current heart rate, this is your training load. If you're in the productive zone or the detraining zone or the overtraining zone, this is activity. This sort of evaluates 
I actually like this. It evaluates just how much general activity, taking into account steps, but also taking into account workouts and overall heart rate over the course of the day to determine were you in general active with a certain goal. Simple date. This is the new one, you know, dawn and dusk, sunrise, sunset times. And this is the other new one. So it's a compass and gives you altitude at any point in time. So you can see where north is any point in time. It just looks really cool. I really like that one just for a simple watch face. And then you have the media control. So that's just the full summary of the watch. You know, some of the things that they did add to the grit is the test. So now that you can do all the tests that the Polar Vantage V2 does, orthostatic, which is an evaluation of recovery, leg recovery test, cycling test, running test, and then the fitness test is like a VO2 max test just using the watch itself without actually having to go out and do any fitness. Uh, watch faces, timers, you know, fuel-wise, protein, carbs, and fat burning throughout a workout. That's you know, introduced with the regular grit, breathing. All these things are relatively straightforward. You have a bunch of sport profiles. So we're going to talk about that in the workout thing. Let's go into the watch, or let's go into the app and look at that, and then talk about the pros and cons. All right, so I'm going to time, try to be timely through this. So this is the landing page, and it gives you the summary of your activity, your, just your general activity for the day. And you can click into any one of these, and it's going to take you to a summary of things. So other outdoor, you know, it was just a run. I don't know why. I guess it may be categorized that I didn't hit the right button for run. Uh, productive, this is your training load status. Your nightly recharge, which is a combination of sleep and autonomic, autonomic nervous system. Your overall sleep score is specifically in total sleep time. When you look at the bottom, there's little tabs. The first tab over, if you just want to actually track a workout from, you know, the device or from the app itself but the main thing is the third one over this is your summary of activity for the day I clearly hit the wrong button uh, when it came to the workout itself this is the summary of what flows into your activity evaluation so how many steps and your calories your overall active time like how much you moved around and then your sleep is next in the tabs and then if you go to the little triple dots on the bottom right you can access a bunch of information but the most simple is the calendar that's where you're going to access the calendar of workouts and your workout log as well as any of the tests you've done if you've done a leg recovery test running test biking test or orthostatic test fitness test any of those they look like one of these little workouts so that's where you'll see that so that's the overview of the app you know i'm going to look at the workout and everything in more specificity so you know within again each one of these you can dive into a specific feature and go back to the main landing page. So let's talk about it, pros and cons. Okay, so what are the pros and cons? I love the look of this watch. I love it. It, it is tough. It's military grade. So it, it protects against dust. It can go from negative 30 or negative 20 Celsius to 50 or whatever. And it's got sapphire glass. It's tough. It's got a raised bezel so you can bang it against a rack or a barbell and it's not going to really get all messed up five days of battery life i didn't get seven i turned it up to max brightness obviously so five days of battery life but that is fine it's got a great band i love the thickness but also the flexibility of the band and the way that it feels i like that they improved the brightness that you can finally do a wrist race and get like a decent level of brightness and i like they added the compass and the sunrise sunset what are the cons in all this it's still only a 1.2 inch screen that is a bummer and the brightness, when you do a wrist race, the max you can get it turned up to is, you know, 15.5. And the max the brightness will actually go is 25.5. So you're missing like more than a third of what you could be enjoying on a wrist race. Let me go four days of battery life versus five days of battery life. So you're getting a dim thing there. The touch screen is a little finicky. And the other thing that I'll say is just about they're adding all these different watch faces and fields of information. So your heart rate zones for the week, your activity, the compass, the sunrise, sunset. I wish they had just a simple summary, almost like a Garmin widget, because you have to scroll through so many different things now just to access pieces of information. It'd be nice if you could access more information in one place. So with that, let's dive into the workouts. Now I did the accuracy, accuracy testing for the heart rate in a different and separate review in the description below. But I will say that it's just not accurate for using it worn on the wrist when doing a CrossFit workout. No watches really are effectively 100% accurate. And if you're tracking your load on your body over time, you really wanna have accuracy. And the Polar does a great job at connecting to an armband. The Verity Sense was 98% accurate. And a chest strap, the H10, is just like the superior um, ECG type accuracy. So it's it, you want to connect to a chest strap just so that you can know that you have accuracy. You don't like wearing some wear it on the arm, whatever. But it's, I think it's like 67% accurate. So with that out of the way, we're going to talk about if you're using this 
for accuracy and you're using it with a chest strap so that you know the information is valuable. So with that, let's dive into the workouts on the watch and on the wrist and then talk about it. I've watched on the app and talk. All right, so what do you get when you go into a workout? What do you get in the workout and what do you get after the workout? So this is like the high intensity interval training is what I use for CrossFit. You hit the start button and you can basically change these data fields in the watch. So I've just sort of set it up to where I've got duration, this current lap time or current lap time and the last lap time. So if you want to track your current your average, if you're tracking your rounds per time and then a heart rate graph and you can scroll down to see a different piece of information. This is just sort of simple lap time information. And then you can keep scrolling down and you get some just more generic things. You know, it only uses the max number of fields is this four field setup. So you can't stretch it to six fields or five fields. You're just limited to the four. And whenever you push this, oh, this middle button side here, it's going to track a lap time so that you can track your time per round. It doesn't have a lap counter, so you can't add number of laps as a added editable field. Um, so that's that. Okay, so I deleted that workout. So now we're gonna go in the log book and see what a workout looks like after you've gotten done with it. So we're not gonna look at the running, but we look at this um, workout from yesterday. You know, it just gives you simple summary of information. You click down. This cardio load is your actual exertion evaluation. So three out of five stars and it, you know, if you really burn it out, that's obviously this is a shorter workout. We just did it um, at home. So it's a little bit less lengthy and less intense. You can see your burn of carbs, proteins, and fats just to see what kind of impact you had on your overall energy consumption, your heart rate zone. So simple set of information with your, this is, should be bigger because this is a main evaluation of the exertion level of the workout that's gonna flow into your training load. That's what you see on the watch. Let's actually look at the, all right, so looking at a workout. So we're just gonna go into a basic longer workout. This just gives you a summary. Any type of workout you do, all the data fields are gonna be in this big red box. If you do a run, there's gonna be a bunch of information in the big red box. Um, but it sort of summarizes there, so it's not really clearly laid out. It's still a little bit, all the information just sort of like there in a big red box. Then you have the training load, the workout evaluation, like the exertion evaluation for that particular workout. Obviously, four out of five stars, three out of five stars, and you start to get to know what your training load number is if it's hard and then you get the heart rate zones it does a really good job if you click on the heart rate zone like click on the heart rate graph it'll turn it sideways and this big chart will come up and then you have the time spent per zone so you can evaluate how much just in general you spent in the peak zones which is visually helpful and then you have your overall energy used which if you're following a macro plan might actually be helpful so that's what you see in summary for the workouts in the in the app itself. so what are the pros i like that they added the different tests specifically i just like they added the orthostatic test so you can evaluate your overall recovery just by doing a spot check of heart rate variability i think the data that you can put on the watch is good it's not fantastic i like that you have fit spark if you want to be able to add like a daily workout you want to be able to just do a body weight workout when you're traveling that's great i think it's okay that they added the protein carb and fat consumption it's not as important for crossfit training i don't think because of the limited time that we're putting in what are the cons i think it's missing data fields that you should be able to add to those data fields like you can't see your number of laps as a simple data field which with us would translate to number of rounds you've completed so if you're doing murph and you're partitioning a certain way we have a bunch of rounds to get through and you get really tired i'd like to know what round i'm on Four data fields. The fact that it's limited to only four data fields, I think they could make better use of the space. But again, go back to point number one, the 1 1.2 inch screen is probably not enough space. Too much info in one area on the workout evaluation on the app. If you do a run or a bike, all of it's in this big red zone. Now, if you're just doing CrossFit, you know, it, it's a simple set of information, but it's not laid out in a way that I think is as visually useful. Another con for the workout is like your perceived work. I have never thought that's worthwhile. Like you, you say you feel like it was extremely hard or just kind of hard and that relates to a score. I don't think that matters at all. I don't think that's worth it, worth anything. And many other devices are tracking aerobic impact and anaerobic impact, whereas the Polar system just tracks the overall cardio load, just a general load score. The other devices are doing a load score too, but they're helping you evaluate your, your impact on your aerobic system and your anaerobic system, which you know uses fuel sources in different ways and has a different overall athletic strengthening. So with that, with your CrossFit training and your growth for All right, so training load pro. So in on the watch, you're just gonna 
they get this simple one screen where it'll show you're being productive and it's got this bar graph. And so if you're getting below this line, it's unproductive or it's just maintaining it above this line, it's overproductive. And you click into it and it's just gonna show you the ratio. So how much average strain you put on your body, the intensity on average of the workout over the last seven days versus the intensity over the last 28 days. So the average of the last 28 days. And if your strain last seven is bigger than your 28 day average, then you got a 1.1, you got a positive and over one number, which puts you in this, if you go over like one and a half or two, then you're overdoing the current day strain versus what your fitness can hold. And it'll give you simple, simple, like, you know, recommendations at the bottom. So that's all you get when it comes to training load on the watch. Let's look at the app. All right, so training load is all in that cardio load. So this is the calendar that we just looked at to look at our workout. And then if you look at there where it says productive in green and you click on that, it's gonna take you to your load, your, lo your cardio load over time. And it's this graph that shows you two different floating numbers. The light blue is your average workout load per day over 28 days. And then the uh, purple is your average over the last seven days. And the whole premise is you want the purple to be above the blue because the purple is what pulls the blue up. So the last seven days of exertion is gonna pull up the 28 day average. Therefore, the assumption or estimation is that you're improving your fitness. You're putting more load on your body in the last few days than you have on average over the last four weeks. And you can put your finger there and you can see just specifics for how much load you put that day and then what your specific strain score is, which is the seven day average versus the tolerance score. And then the more you get that strain score to be over and bigger than the tolerance, the more you get this green productive down below. So it says productive, which means I'm pushing my fitness higher because the purple is over the light blue. The other thing is if you look in the top right, just below the cardio load buildup, where you have that little arrows pointing to all four corners, you push that and it takes you to a cool chart that shows you your fitness over time. I think this is the coolest thing any of the watches manufacturers have done. So I've tested a bunch of different polar watches you can see. And the coolest thing about it is you can see your blue fitness. It's like a water wave. Your blue is your fitness over time. And you can see where your strain like really maxed out. Um, their huge cardio load day strain was way above the tolerance. Um, some of these things change because I changed my max heart rate, which means I have to work a lot harder to push the strain score up. Um, but you can see your blue load line um, over time. And on the bottom, you can see where you were underdoing it or overdoing it. And it literally shows you in those green formats, you know, what periods of time you were, you know, going down in your fitness and going up. But this is really fantastic. It shows you all your history in a visible, visible, clear format across time. So that's the training load. Let's come and talk about it. I mean, I've got some pros about the training load. I love the visibility. I love that it. it's like a water line over your fitness level. You can just see your fitness level across time. I, I have tested multiple different polar watches over time and it is just sort of blind to it all. It just sort of says, here's your fitness development just on the polar platform. And I think that's fantastic. I love that it's simple. Your strain in the last seven days versus your strain in the last 28 days. I think that's helpful and useful and just, it's clear cut and easy to understand. I really like that. On the con side, on the flip side, is I feel like they need to evolve their training load because I feel like it's too simple and it doesn't lack enough specificity in different types of training you could be doing. Again, like I said, the aerobic versus anaerobic workout evaluation. I feel like it should be helping you understand how you're training, not just load, unload you know, load this week, load 28 days. You know, it, it's a little bit too simple in our day and age. This is, you know, October, 2021 to not be evolving the evaluation of your load on your body and the type of load on your body over time. And then a big con is the recovery time. Now, I don't know, you know, all of all the watches are focusing on recovery time as one of the metrics post-workout, the strenuousness of that workout. And Garmin's got this in-depth ev evolution where it takes into account your heart rate variability throughout a day, your sleep over the last night, and the rigor of that one workout to tell you how much time you should wait till the next workout. But just the fact that they don't have that and they used to have it. It used to be an available stat before they introduced Training Load Pro. Why can't they put it on there? Some estimate of recovery time from workout to workout and take into account your training load, whether you're detraining, you're overtraining, whatever it is, tell me I should take more time off. Just make it simple because the orthostatic test, I feel like doesn't 
doesn't help a whole lot. It's neat that it's there. You can take a heart rate variable to measure it. You can see if you're recovered based on that one snapshot, but I think they just need to do a basic recovery time. So with that, let's dive into sleep and wellness, and then we'll talk okay, about it. Okay, so sleep and wellness, you do can't, you can do the orthostatic test on here. So the orthostatic test, you actually have to have a chest strap. So something that's gonna, you know, give you ECG level heart rate and it's gonna track your, your heart rate variability over the course of three minutes laying down and then standing up. So that'll give you a recovery evaluation that is built into this. We're not gonna look at that because the most simple um, sleep and wellness is this summary of the nightly recharge. This is both recovery and sleep in one. You can see that I slept, it was okay. I only slightly you know, recovered from last night. And you can see, again, it says okay. Some nights it'll say poor, some nights it'll say good, some nights it'll say great. And so it gives you this sort of gauge. It's simple information you can take is actionable. It gives you it in two basic components. So the ANS charge is your autonomic nervous system charge and your sleep charge is your sleep score. So these two pieces flow into this summary of information. So you can scroll down and you can see all the details. We're gonna look at it on the app where it's actually more useful. So this is just sort of average. I did okay, beat to beat intervals, heart rate variability through night and breathing rate. This is actually just a four hour window because the autonomic nervous system recharge is just a four hour snapshot within the sleep cycle. And then the sleep gives you a bunch of different details and it's all in prettier format on the app. So we'll look at that, but you can see all the details here on the watch, which is great that they evolved that and they allow that. So that's pretty much the summary of all things wellness related other than the orthostatic test. Uh, wellness and recovery, and then obviously this is where you find your sleep. Let's look at the app. Okay, so again on the landing page, the sleep and wellness really is summarized in the nightly recharge. So you click on that, and this shows you the nightly recharge, which is a culmination of the autonomic nervous system charge, and we'll look at that in the sleep charge. Two pieces of information. Autonomic nervous system is like your heart rate variability, your overall heart recovery, and the sleep is just your overall sleep quality that flows through to your nightly recharge. And you can see it's giving me goods, and then it'll put me in the tank sometimes with a poor, a poor, usually during the week I sleep terrible. Um, so let's go back to that. So you can see that there, you know, it gives you tips. You're ready for action. You got a good recovery that night. You're poor. So it says bottom, please don't do anything. You know, rest or train very lightly. It's okay to train light or rest today, but let your body recover. So it, it gives you recommendations based on the score. So if we go into the sleep score, this is the most obvious, the most simple. Um, I think it used to be you couldn't edit the start time and end time if you if it was wrong. Um, but here you can. You can actually go back a day and you can see, you know, the time you fell asleep, the time you woke up, when the stages of deep light, REM, and interruptions were. And then it gives you specific stuff like what your last night was versus your last 28 days of average. So you can see real detail. I love that. And then if you want to look at the autonomic nervous system recharge, it's really helpful because it basically breaks it down to beat to beat intervals, heart rate variability, and breathing rate to see if you're fully resting and recovering if your body is really taking. But if you look at this, you see the light window versus the whole window. It basically is only giving you an evaluation of four hours of your night's sleep, starting about an hour after you've gone to bed and then four hours that follow. So you know, you can see that it didn't pick up, you know, it started at 310, you know, and then it went only to, you know, whatever that is, 710. It's only picking up a period of four hours. So if you have a disturbance, it's gonna mess everything up and it'll tell you some wrong information. But this is the summary of how much, you know, recharge is both, it is both wellness and sleep in one. Let's talk about the pros and cons of how Polar Okay, is. sleep and wellness is something Polar has done well for a long period of time. I love that every morning you say, it just basically asks, are you awake? And you say, yes, I'm awake. And it says, okay, let me run the stats. And it gives you a morning evaluation based on two categories, the sleep and then the autonomic nervous system regeneration like we saw in the app and on the watch. I like that it gives you a simple format that's easy to understand and then you can dive into the data and see the data if you want, but you have these simple scores that flow through a simple recommendation for how you're doing that day with simple recommendation verbiage for what you should do that day. Fantastic, great use of sleep. I like that you can adjust the time now on the sleep so if it doesn't pick up when you fell asleep or it thought you, you know, because one time I took my watch off and it like missed two hours and thought I was asleep and it didn't give me autonomic nervous system and I just adjusted the start time for the sleep and the autonomic nervous system adjusted as well. I like that you can adjust it. I like that it has both those features. I like the details. And it, you know, if you do get into habit, I like that you can do the orthostat orthostatic test to get a different perspective on recovery. Um, but what is the con? The, you know, the con is a couple different layers. So one, it's just taking your sleep as your recovery focus. 
you can do orthostatic tests. I'm not saying that. You do have to have a chest strap, so take that in mind. But it's really just focusing on your sleep. And then more than that, it's actually for the autonomic nervous system, it's just focused on four hours of sleep, about an hour after you've gone to bed and for four hours after that. So if you have a disturbance an hour and a half in or three hours in, it's gonna mess up your stats and say that your four hour window showed bad results and you're not ready for working out. But if you slept eight hours, you're good. You should be okay to work out. So it should take into account variants like that. And then I wish it took into account some impact of the days wearing on you, like how much the day is bearing down on you to determine how much your overall recovery, how your recovery is looking. So that's sleeping well is pros and cons. So with that, let's dive into the real deal of what I think about this watch and some of the features and benefits. So what is the real deal? I think the real deal is this is an excellent mix of workout exertion evaluation, training load over time, how your fitness is evolving in a simple format and great sleep and overall wellness from sleep in a very well put together evaluated version that you can take that's actionable and simple and clear. I love specifically that this particular watch has got a toughness for CrossFit. I love that it's got a stainless steel bezel. It's got weight to it. I like that. I like that it's got sapphire glass. I like that it looks awesome. I like that it's military grade. I like the band. I think the band is thick and tough, but it also is rubbery and is stretchable. Great, great, great um, overall build quality for specifically for CrossFit, coupled with great workout evaluation and training load. But what do I not like and what is in the real world not as helpful? I think they need to evolve their science for fitness development. I think they need to step it up with wellness throughout 24 hours in the day because Garmin is mastering that mastering it and court and Sunto has it too. whoop obviously takes into account strain throughout the day and overall you're just how much you put on your body in a day if you had high stress or high activity that day it should flow through somewhere not just in how you slept and sometimes and specifically how you slept in a four hour window how much recovery you created in that window so there should be more to it it should look at more in today's day with how the watches are, are evolving now. And then in the training load, I think it should get more specific. I feel like it's too shallow and too simple. I love the way it looks and I love the simplicity because it's easy to understand, but I feel like it's too simple for really wanting to up your game and evolve your fitness and really push your training level. So those are the things. And then the other major things just in the build and design is I feel like the brightness is super upsetting. I'm so sick of Polar not making full brightness, full brightness. The fact that your wrist raised, you set it on high on the watch. They made that, that's awesome that they gave you that ability to adjust. And it's still like 35% dimmer than the stupid button press. That makes no sense. Set high as the max brightness. I want this to be blazing bright. I can charge it once every four days. I'm okay with that. Let us have the control because if it has the capability to go another 35% brighter, then let us go extra bright. That, that's frustrating because at 15 lumens, it's basically half the brightness of the Suunto Peak 9 and it's 23% of the brightness of the Phoenix. That means the Phoenix 6 is 4 point something times brighter, 400% brighter at the full brightness. So competitive watches have much more brightness and flexibility to go to that brightness. So you wanna control it, you wanna make it dim, you do what you want, but give me the ability to go to the full brightness. And at 25 lumens, we're talking somewhat competitive and usually more visibly useful. And then the other minor thing is standard watches with 47 millimeters in breadth should have a 1.3 inch screen nowadays. So it's getting better where the size, the larger watches have bigger screens and smaller watches have smaller screens. So this is a great size screen for a 44 millimeter watch, but for a 47 millimeter watch, it should be 1.3 inches. Others are doing it and doing it well. So, and then the last thing is they should have recovery time on there. But the minor things, what's not important for CrossFit, I don't think the tests are important. You can do a running test where you just continually run faster till you die. The biking test, you continually bike faster till you die. Leg jumping, I don't feel like those are useful. Some of the widgets and the layouts, not totally useful, but I like that they're evolving things. But with that, that's the recover. I mean, that's the, that's the real deal. That's the real deal for the Polar Gritic Pro. Awesome design. 
really made for CrossFit. Awesome and simple workout evaluation and training load evaluation and wellness evaluation. On the negatives, they need to make the screen brighter, bigger, and they need to evolve the details and the depth at which they're looking at wellness and your training. So with that, that's the Figure Hunter, the Polar Grit X Pro. Thanks so much for watching.